Hello and welcome. Last week I published a video on asking three different AI models to provide me a profitable day trading strategy. The results were mixed from disappointing to absolutely phenomenal. And one AI model was capturing all our attention. That is Grog. It provided us a strategy with a return which is absolutely unbelievable. And as I said in the previous video, I think that is wrong, misleading, too good to be true. In this video, I'm going over it and explain what is the problem with that strategy. And the whole story of this is be careful what AI is telling you and put it to the test for yourself. Now, let's take a look at what Grok recommended us to trade. So just a recap, strategy was based on intraday cryptocurrency price data. And we just asked, hey, give me a profitable day trading strategy with exact specifics. So you can watch the previous video to see the prompt of what I passed to Grok and also other AIs. So what did we get from Grok? So Grok recommends a momentum-based strategy. So it calculates momentum as the percentage change in the closing price, so of a 15-minute candle, over a specified window, which is five periods. Now, the buy signal is triggered, that is here, when the momentum exceeds a positive threshold. That is defined in the parameters above here, so 0.5% here. Now, the selling signal is just, so that was the buying signal, the selling signal is just vice versa. So it's triggered when the momentum falls below the negative threshold. So same threshold, but just negative. Now, a trade is entered. Let's go back to the buying condition. So a trade is entered at the open price of the signal candle, which is already a problem in terms of forward looking bias. But I'm not going into details at this point, but this is just as a side note, also one of many of the problems, but I'm going over main problems, which are easy to understand why the strategy would not work as it is now. So, but let's take that for now. Let's say, okay, you enter and finally the comment says enter next candle open, which is not the case, but let's just assume it would be. So you are entering into the trade now. And then you monitor that trade over the holding period. So over a fixed holding period, in our case is also defined in the parameters. So uh, four periods here, so four, four times 15 uh, minutes, you monitor it, and then you check the exit conditions. And the exit conditions doesn't get much uh, straightforward. So you just check for the profit target, which is just the high of that candle being larger or equal to your entry price times a certain profit target. So profit target is also defined above here. So you just exit when you made 1% profit. Super simple. And you also close when you made 1% loss, all right? So this being checked here. So when the high is above or equal to the enterprise times that profit target, you are uh, exiting with a target profit reached. Or you check if the low is below or equal to the enterprise times the negative profit target. That is just the stop loss, which is the same as the target profit also. Another problem of this strategy, just as a side note in terms of risk reward, or, and there's the next condition that is when the holding period is over and neither the target profit nor the stop loss is hit, then you also just exit on that candle, all right? Okay, that's the whole strategy. And now let's go over some, and there are many, many more besides the one I already mentioned and the one I'm going over now. Let's go over why this is not going to work. So we have the trade lock, which is stored in TradeDF. 
And this is the first thing besides the cumulative PNL, which we already took a look at, analyze. So trade the F. We have, and you see this insane number of trades. So just as a recap, we start beginning of December and going until March. So that is roughly three to four months, or so roughly uh, four months, right? December, January, February, and March. And you are getting 1.7K trades. Think about that. The amount of trades is insane. And these trades have to be paid. And that's one of the uh, main criticisms here. So you get a ton of trades, but you don't take any fees into account. But before even going into that, take a look at the trades here. You see the first problem in the first two lines. You enter the first trade at 12 o'clock, 5th of December. You exit 1 p.m., so one hour later, 5th of December. But now let's take a look at the next trade. You open in the mid of those two trades. So you have overlapping positions, which is not a big deal. So you can design trading strategies with overlapping positions, no problem. But this strategy is going all in with one Bitcoin. So your entry for this 102K, which was the worth of Bitcoin back then, and then you exit for the, the target price there, but you open another position with another 100K. So you have invested 200K and that, that's simply not realistic, right? You have to decide either you only go into the trade with like 20% of your capital and you allow overlapping positions or you simply don't allow overlapping positions. And without going into the details of these overlapping positions, you can quickly see what's the main problem here in the strategy in terms of position management. So you see it exactly here. If the F position I log minus one is not equal to, to zero, continue. But there's no thing where this position flag is being reset to zero. So if you check if, the, if a certain uh, um, target profit or stop loss is being hit, the position flag is never being set to zero again. And that is why you see this overlapping positions here. So there is no or wrong position management in this code. Next, far more important one. So even if we allow overlapping positions here, we get other problems. And that is, as said, the trading fees. Now, take a look at the PL here. This is the flat PL without taking any fees into account. But you have to pay fees. And let's just add fees here to see the picture what you're getting then. So let's take the PL and let's just say you have a fee of 0.02% round trip. So what is round trip? Round trip is that you buy and sell. So you cover for the buy and the sell. And for simplicity, let's just take the entry price and apply the round trip for the fees. So in reality, obviously you pay fees on the entry and then on the exit, but this is more than enough to capture the uh, fees here. So that is perfectly fine. The difference might be 100 to 100 when you apply it on the entry and exit. So what do we mean? Apply 0.01 on the entry and apply 0.01 on the exit as fees. But I'm just applying on the entry a round trip, so 0.2% here. And that is a realistic fee, all right? So trade TF, fee, then you just take 0.02. And with that, your fee would be this one here. And this fee you have to subtract from your PL to get what you actually made with that trade. And this is a very, very generous view still because you don't take stuff like slippage into account where you don't get the exact entry as you thought you will get due to liquidity constraints or many more 
reasons why you wouldn't get exactly that price, but rather slightly a worse price than that. So without taking this into account and calculating the uh, real PL now, which is just your PL minus the fees you have to pay. So your trade F PL minus trade F fee. And with that, you will get your real PL. So if you check that, you get a PL of 400 bucks and then apply the fees and then you only end up with 235. And now the interesting story, how would that sum up? So just as a, a reminder, how did the PL turn out? So if you sum the PL for each of those trades, just take the sum here, you get this phenomenal value of over 300K, right? So 323K profit. But if you do the same story on the real PNL, you see that you only made $808. So that is such a low profit for the invested amount. It is actually basically telling you this strategy is not doing anything. It neither losses, but it's also not performing at all. So that's, that is the first key point. So you see, when you have that many trades, the fees are playing a huge, 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 huge role here. All right. Last but not least, another key problem with this strategy, and I always claim or I always mention how important that is for uh, candle the candlestick based strategies or any strategies where you take open high low close values and that is simply the timing issue when you don't take live tick prices which i always recommend to take and which i've gone over um, getting this data into a database many many times before but i will keep on doing that in the future so what do i mean problem with this strategy is that when you check this condition. So you check, where is it? Your profit loss target. You go over that candle and you check the high being above or equal to entry price times the profit target. But you don't know when this was happening within this 15 minutes. Maybe within these 15 minutes, the stop loss was already triggered. Right, so this happened before, but then the price jumped back within 15 minutes. I mean, it's the crypto market. In 15 minutes, there can happen uh, a ton of things. All right, so there is uh, a wrong timing here, or not, not, not necessarily wrong, but a potentially leading to wrong timeline. And that is that you check the target profit first and then the stop loss without knowing what actually happened first. So in reality, you could exit the trade with a loss, but this one would tell you, you would exit the trade with a profit here. So what is the solution to that? As said, work with live tick prices. So you avoid that. And yeah, that's the main problems. So we already identified the strategy won't work. That's the summary of that. And the whole uh, story of this video is be critical with what AI, AI is telling you because most of the information provided is inaccurate and in very large terms, very often wrong. Thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye bye.